The following provides some key concepts from right brain psychotherapy and regulation theory and how they help us understand the brain and the healing process. By the way, regulation theory is the conceptual framework upon which Shore bases his psychotherapeutic modality. It encompasses the idea that when right brain synchrony occurs between client and therapist, the therapist's brain becomes an extension of the regulatory apparatus of the client's brain when the latter is overcome by intense affect. The clinician's ability to regulate affect in the therapeutic chamber creates an environment wherein the client's brain can strengthen its ability to regulate emotional overwhelm unilaterally. The first key theme is mutual regressions in the service of the self. Regression is a psychoanalytic term that refers to an individual's reverting to an earlier form of psychological functioning. Regression can be pathological, like when an individual under extreme stress begins acting in a way that is not developmentally appropriate for the interpersonal situation. Or it can be healthy, like when you cast off your social inhibitions when appropriate, such as in play, when you dance like a child at a party, act like a hooligan at a sporting arena, or laugh at crude humor in a comedy club, also during sex. And then you return unscathed to your normal form of developmentally appropriate social functioning. In psychoanalysis, regression is operationalized. In the confidentiality of the therapy room, an individual can regress to an immature state, be brought back delicately to the present by the clinician, and then go about their day as normal, with new insights about themselves. This process allows a reintegration of the earlier states of functioning that were repressed from consciousness. So then what makes it a mutual regression? Essentially, the trained therapist through the process of transference and countertransference, regresses with the client. They can go there and come back with the client. The therapist's brain has mastered the neurobiological art of regressing into right brain effective intensity and then returning to a regulated state. This requires that the therapist's brain is organismically developed and can maintain intense effective states without becoming overwhelmed or resorting to defense mechanisms, not even those provided by their professional clinical persona or the technicalities of their modality. The mature therapist knows their traumatic trigger points. They can tolerate intense emotional states within themselves, surrender control of the room to the emotional intensity of the client, and then bring it all back to regulation. The second key theme is right brain synchronicity and the interpersonal subjective field. If the client and therapist regress successfully, they enter a state of right brain synchronicity. From the perspective of the therapist, this is a flow-like state, outside of phenomenological consciousness. Research from fMRI scans shows that in these therapeutically aligned moments, the hemispheric domination of the brain changes in both client and therapist. The left brain, with its propensity for categorizing and differentiating, essentially goes offline, and a dyadic subjective field is created. Both brains are right brain dominated at this moment. It should be noted that while simultaneous right brain dominance can be seen clearly in an fMRI during this phenomenon, no hard science is provided as evidence of a shared subjectivity that occurs between the client and therapist, outside of clinical reports. It appears that we may not yet possess the technology or perhaps have not asked the right questions of our brain scanners yet to demonstrate this. Experienced therapists relate to the felt experience of this phenomenon and may even use psychological mechanisms of their own to enter this state when performing their work. But in right brain psychotherapy, Shor doesn't explain how a clinician can affect this neurological state. Here's what Shor says about right brain synchronicity in the therapy room. And I quote, the psychobiologically attuned intuitive clinician tracks the nonverbal moment to moment rhythmic structures of the patient's internal states and is flexibly and fluidly modifying his or her own behavior to synchronize with that structure, thereby co-creating with the client a growth facilitating context for the organization of the therapeutic alliance. Shore acknowledges that there could be a disruption in the right brain synchronicity if therapeutic trust is broken. If this occurs, the cyclical rupture and repair of synchronicity between client and therapist corresponds to pivotal moments of neurological reorganization and synaptic restructuring. The third key theme is increased affect tolerance and regulation. There's something about the term regulation theory that is off-putting. I get the same tummy twitch when I read about William Glasser's control theory. Perhaps it's the all too common fear that the therapist is an extension of a regulatory mechanism of the social infrastructure. 
a position that I fear some counselors actually absorb into their professional self-concept at times, particularly when treating minors. Clients must feel safe in the therapy room, not under threat of forced behavioral modification. Additionally, emotional regulation is often required in interpersonal dynamics of oppression, as in employment situations or authoritarian situations like at school, even to the extent that authentic experience becomes repressed from consciousness. But this is not that. Regulation theory is not a behaviorist mechanism to teach self-control and conformity. In fact, Shor differentiates between two forms of self-control. The first, more traditional sense, involves higher cognitive left-brain processes. As in situations of enforced compliance, mechanics of authority and power are used to encourage behaviors that in time may alter the attitudes that underpin them. A benign example of this would be an individual's begrudgingly following the directive to exercise three times a week, only to find out two months later that they actually enjoy it. Again, this is not that. Regulation theory is about training the brain to regulate intense emotional experiences. Previously denied emotional content finds space in the intersubjective field facilitated by the therapist, such that the client develops the ability to tolerate ever-increasing intensity of emotional experience. The client develops their own adaptive psychological processes to regulate their emotional experience, both in isolation and interpersonally by leveraging a trusted relationship to assist in the regulation of emotion. The therapist mimics a mother's work. As an infant develops, it gradually experiences heightened levels of excitement, sadness, anger, and fear, and returns each time to the safety of the mother. Each time the child returns to the mother, right brains resynchronize between the mother and the child, and the child eventually develops the neurological mechanisms to tolerate the ever-increasing levels of emotional intensity that they face in their life. In healthy development, this results in a well-developed sense of self and resiliency, in contrast to a highly restricted self that relies heavily on socially maladaptive defense mechanisms that disallow emotional experience. At its mildest, maladaptive regulation manifests as an individual lacking emotional awareness. At its worst, it becomes a diagnosable personality disorder. In a sense, the therapist facilitates the maternal titration of negative affect in the client and the healthy development of the regulation process. The goal of right brain psychotherapy is to create a growth facilitating relational environment that stimulates plasticity in the cortical and subcortical regions of the brain. At the neurochemical level, this relational state is marked by increased levels of oxytocin as would be in the case of the mother-child dyad. By recreating the optimal environment for neurogenesis in the therapy room, the therapist can assist the client in changing their brain in a very material sense, repairing traumatic disruptions in interpersonal attachment and their neural correlates in the physical structure of the brain.